Hi. Welcome to Minutes with Mickey, a time for us to wonder about the story Burning the Book. We find this as one of the six stories from Jeremiah that we're taking time to spend on because this is the point in history in which Judah is about ready to be overtaken by Babylon. They are already under the thumb of Egypt and King Jehoiakim is the king and he is an evil king. It's, we start out this particular story by saying that Jeremiah had been preaching in Judah for 23 years. And notice that during these 23 years, there hasn't been a lot of, pay, of um, people paying attention to him. He's been pronouncing judgment against Judah, against the way they are living, the way the kings are doing their work, and um, it's been not going well. Remember, too, that, that um, Jeremiah was a contemporary of Josiah. And so for some of those years, while Josiah was king, things were going well. But now we have Jehoiakim as king, and we know that it's a very evil time. One of the things that I notice about this story comes in chapter 26 and in chapter 36. There's two verses that sort of stand out, and I thought that it's important always to go back into the text when we take a look at stories like this. But listen to what it says in Jeremiah 26, verse 3. Perhaps they will listen, and everyone will turn from his evil way, that I may repent of the calamity which I am planning to do to them because of the evil of their deeds. Notice that right there, God is saying, I want you to speak into this so that they will repent. And in that repentance, then I won't have to bring about this judgment. Notice the way grace is just so prevalent here. And again, it says it again in, in chapter 36, um, verse 3. Perhaps the house of Judah will hear all the calamity which I plan to bring on them in order that every man will turn from his evil way. Then I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. This is also reminiscent of what is spoken of in the book of Revelation when the Lord talks about the things that are yet to come as he reveals the revelation of Jesus Christ to the Apostle John. And um, John the disciple, and he realizes that in the text it says over and over again, after the calamity that God says will happen, the phrase is repeated several times. It'd be great to look this up. And yet they did not repent. And yet they did not repent. It seems as if God has done this all the way through history and is going to continue to do it again in the future, that the calamities that come upon us increase like birth pangs. But the reason that they keep increasing is because we just keep not repenting. And so it has to get worse and worse and worse in an effort that to, for us to repent. And so we see God's grace in this story tremendously. And then I noticed that in the chapter 26 piece of this, um, Jeremiah speaks to all the officials and they tell him, you can't come into the temple anymore. You're not allowed to be in here anymore. And it's like, oh, really? I can't, I can't be in here anymore? And he actually obeys that mandate because we see in chapter 36 that he sends Baruch, his scribe, in to read these things to the people in the temple. He says, because I'm not allowed there. Why would he obey that? I don't see anything here that God says obey the people, but he simply does obey that. And I, I, th I thought that was curious. The other thing is that there was in chapter 26 another man named Uriah who also spoke the same kind of judgment against the nation of Judah and yet King Jehoiakim was able to seek him out and kill him. So God did not protect Uriah but he protected Jeremiah. Why? Why would one be protected and not the other? And then the question that I take into sort of my current life or today for all of us to think about is, you know what, we think that we should be able to turn the world around in two years. And here Jeremiah was doing this for 23 and it didn't seem to get anywhere. And yet he was faithful no matter what. What does that say for us today? Then there's another thing that I thought was very interesting, and that has to do with this burning book thing. Jeremiah has Baruch reading this in the temple and the people there um, are worried and then it gets to the next level of priests and then they hear the whole story that Jeremiah has written about what's coming, judgment coming upon them through Babylon. And then Jehoiakim gets it read to him. Notice that he listens to the entire text. 
and chapter at a time or section at a time or whatever it is, after that piece is read, that gets torn out and thrown into the fire. And I wondered to myself, why is it that, Je that Jehoiakim didn't just simply take the entire book right off the bat and throw the whole thing in the, in the fire? Why did he keep listening? Why did he keep listening? Why did he keep listening? I really found that curious. If someone started speaking badly about me, I'd want to say, stop right there. I don't want to hear any more and throw the whole thing out. But no, he sat and listened to it all. And one at a time, threw that in the fire, threw that in the fire. What does that say about Jehoiakim as a person? I don't have any answer. I'm wondering about it. I'm wondering if that ever struck you too. Isn't it interesting that he just was so unmoved that he kept wanting to hear? And then God says something to Baruch. He says, that, he says, I know you're worried about what will happen to you, but I will protect you. And I love this last line from the story. I will be with you. There's such a huge piece in the Old Testament and the New Testament where God continues to remind us that he will be with us. And yet, that does not mean bad things won't happen. That does not mean that we will automatically have a happy life. It does not mean that everything will go well for us. It does not mean that we will be able to convince people that they're wrong and that they need to repent. It, God just promises for those of us who are faithful, he will be with us. Hmm. What's God saying to you in this story? Have a great week.